Welcome back. Now, if you enjoyed reading Haji Muhammad Daji's first book of essays, Sorry, Not Sorry, Experiences of a Brown Woman in a White South Africa, well, you're in for a treat as she has recently released her second collection titled Here's the Thing. Well, in this thought-provoking memoir, Haji shares stories and insights that are uh, contemplative, comedic and controversial by touching on some of these serious and topical issues pertaining to the loss of her father, challenges of female aging and popular unpopular truths rather about parenting to mention just a few. Well, she joins us on Zoom now to tell us more about her latest offering. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Just in your own words, give us an outline of what this book is about. Um, I think the best way I can describe it is that this book is a lost and found burn of what it means to live and what it means to be human with all the complications and intricacies, um, the humor, the sadness, the grief, the illness. Um, literally everything you can think of, plus the thoughts that people maybe don't want you to say out loud. Mm -hmm. now, now the, the first chapter is your heartfelt letter to your late dad, whom you describe as your biggest fan. I mean, speak to us about this and the things um, he asked you repeatedly in the last year of his life. Yeah, so, so my dad had a, a, a brain tumor, and I'll, I'll, I'll let the readers learn more about that from the book. But in the last year of his life, um, he constantly asked for me to, to, you know, publish a second book, as that was so easy. I mean, all dad's things, things are so easy. Things are so easy. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's what he asked for. And he also knew that we were in the process of um, adopting our boy, and and so he kept on asking when he's going to see his grandson as mm -hmm. well. And obviously, as challenging as the universe can be, he happened to. Um, to um, die, and three weeks later, we got the call to 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 say that we're matched with our son, and mm. he went to meet him. I uh, was short by three weeks, and he didn't also get to see his book. But I, I'm sure that he knows I would have done it. <laughs> yeah. What do you think he would think of it? Um. Let me put it this way. If my dad were alive, mm -hmm. I would still have written that letter, mm -hmm. um, that, first, that first chapter. Not obviously in the, in, in the, from the angle of grieving him because he would have still been alive, but I definitely still would have written it because it was, the, the book is part of my truth that I'm living at this stage of my life, um, and truths evolve and they change. Um, but everything that's in it is honest for the time in which it was written, and so that why that's why I would have I would have um, kept it in in some way. Yeah. And I think his thoughts on it would be, I think, absolutely fair. I mean, he's a monster of a man in in the public space or in the academic space or whatever, um, just in terms of the size of his personality. Yeah. And his impact. But I th I think my dad would have understood and appreciated um, the truth and the honesty and sincerity in that chapter as well as many others. Speak to us about people of color, particularly women, and writing what they like as opposed to writing what is expected of them. Well, we're still kind of trying to, trying to break the mold on that. I mean, you see that um, in literary circles and media circles like journalism, not just in South Africa, but, but all over the world. Um, particularly black women or women of color or Hispanic women or Latino women, um, brown women, you know, what, whatever you want to call it. I mean, black in South Africa is, is accurate and it's constitutionally right. But we've always had to sort of be a loudspeaker for entire communities or, you know, our entire gender and race. Um, everything we say has always got to be... Um, political, um, quite hard, uh, you know, quite take a standy. Um, we've been boxed into these things, and, and that's the only way people think that we deserve to write, is if we're going to write something that is going to give them um, the angry black woman. Yeah. Sort of. yeah. Um, and, and that is how we've been trained, as well as the media, I guess, have been trained to 
to recognize that that's the only way we can be published and the only way we will be read. Yeah. And I just don't think that's true. I think it's a system and that the system needs to be broken. Another thing that you also touch on in the book is the, you know, the controversial issue of parenting. In the book, you take us through your abbreviated step-by-step -step guide. Briefly run through that for us. Well, <laughs> this is one of the <laughs> this is one of the chapters I think that may or may not win or lose me a lot of love from from other parents and and I think moms in particular. Or or it may I think you know I think we just as new parents who whoever we are. I don't think that we allowed to say when someone says just oh how's the new baby like we're not allowed to say. Actually, it really sucks, <laughs> you know? It's really hard and it really sucks. And every night I go to bed crying, thinking about what I could be doing with my time instead. <laughs> what, you know? I, mean, I don't know, have you, ever, have you ever run across a friend and said, like, how, how, how's the new baby? And they said that to you. And it, it's actually, and when you're tired, I mean, a new mom, you are tired, honestly, and you're tired, and you just, no, you don't feel tired. like seeing this little person. They're not cute at that time. No, and you will never run across, I have yet to run across a woman on the street, friend or otherwise. I mean, very, very close friends of mine have been, you know, have, have lied to me before, being like, oh, this is the most, the best thing that will ever happen to you. It's so nice. <laughs> And I'm like, well, it's not. Like, I know it's not. You know, I'm here now. I'm in this episode. <laughs> you know, it's lovely. I love my boy. He's amazing. He's entertaining. He's fun. He's like, divisive at times. And I want to laugh, laugh at him. And I just got to walk away. But damn it, it's hell. As I think part of the reason, and you must correct me if I'm wrong, is that it doesn't come with a manual. And we're all just trying to find a way around it. And you think you have to be perfect at it. There, there are several. There's several. There are almost too many manuals. Mm. But here's the problem with manual is that they just put so much pressure on parents, and again, mothers specifically, to be the perfect parent. Um, and, and mothers have been castigated for years and watched for years about how they're parenting, what kind of mother they are, and are they spending enough time with their kids? Is it quality time? Are they focusing too much on work? Like, you know, all this stuff. And then there's this, all this newfangled stuff about, like, you know, so much sugar is enough, so much sugar is not okay. Like, I mean, we know the facts, right? Sugar is bad. Yeah. Like, done. But is it completely avoidable for a two-year-old who goes to daycare and kids' parties and whatever? And no. Cake. So does it mean you have a mother if you have some cake? No. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right. Haji, we have to leave it there, but thank you so much. What a beautiful conversation. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, columnist, author Haji Muhammad Dalji, and we are just in conversation about her newly released Burma titled, Here's the Thing.